Praise God. Welcome to the house of the Lord. This is a time of rejoicing one way or the other. If you look to your left, you look to your right, you see some empty seats. I don't want you praying for those empty seats. I want you to pray for the bodies that's out there to come in here. These seats ain't going out. Chairs don't fill itself. We feel it. He said, go to the nation. So this is the thing of it is. What we do is learn today, or have learned today, we learn it to go out to the nation and bring people into the kingdom. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We come, oh, Father, that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We continue to look to you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So greater is he that was in us, oh, Father, than he that's in the world. We can do all things through Christ who strength. For this day, this time, this place, oh, Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the thank you, Lord. We know that things you have tied together, oh, Father, for come from we get it from this person, that person, oh, Father, but hey, it's all come out, oh, Father, in the same way, oh, Father, that we come to serve, and we come to serve you and to bless bless the ones that are in need, oh, Father, and we do it that you will get the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray, and everybody said, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and... Uh, something that I've been talking about, but I'm really going to force it on the end, is go back to the beginning. God wants us to go back to the beginning to read what he has given us. His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we have to then. I remember John, John Osteen, that Joel Osteen's father. He said, your miracle is in your mouth. But what, we, what are we speaking are we speaking God's word? Are we speaking the world's word? Are we speaking our word? You know, you, we can do many things, but the point of it is, God has given you a gift, given me a gift. We don't develop it sitting in that chair. We have to go out and do it. And then once we start doing it, the confidence builds up in us. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so he's given us strength to go and do it. Once God gives a gift, it does not come back to him. It must be and it will be what? Fulfilled. Some of you got calling on your life. You know you have calling. You have had dreams and vision. But you're waiting for somebody to come up and tell you. No, you got to get up and go. Get this in here. He just died this week. A guy by the name of Bill Russell, I know many years, he said, if you want to play basketball, learn the rule. So I'm saying today, if you want to know about God, get his word. It's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. This is what we get to get the word in. If you can't, if you can't, you want to talk about it, and you can't give me an address where to go find it, don't talk to me about it. Don't want to hear what somebody said. I want to know what this said that I can go back and talk about it because this is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who's going to carry it? You and I. We go out and do it. We have a great, uh, great society in this world, and we're going, well, you show me where in that Bible that God said the government take, take, take care of children. Nowhere does it say that. I haven't found it, but let me know. Because he did not say that. Huh? He gave us, in Genesis 2.24, paraphrasing it, he said, a man leaves his mother and father and takes a wife. They become one. That's the beginning of a family. It produces. It, 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 it's become fruitful. But somewhere along the line, we let it reverse to the weak, teaching the children. The children are teaching what? Us. And we got to get away from that. I'm sorry, it may be sound harsh one way or another, but God gives you a gift and He do not take it back. Romans, that's Romans 11 29. It's irrevocable. It must be. So, what God has given you the gift of things, and fulfill that gift. You don't get with somebody that can help you fulfill that gift. And the word is the God's word is what, what makes us fulfill the dreams and vision of our life. 
pastor and Pastor Anna can't, can't do this by themselves. It takes us. We've been talking about it a long time already. How many of you working on your 12? Hmm? Oh, you just think if someone come in one side of the mouth and go out the other side. No, Jesus had what? 12. He's your big brother, isn't he? Is he told you wrong? Are we going out to try to look for that 12? But it's only going to happen when we take the initiative and take the step forward. If, I don't, if you don't know something, say, I don't know. But I need help. You got the greatest help inside of you if you're a child of God. That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you, guide you wherever you want to go. But if you start doing something wrong, he starts backing up. Hoping that you will hope your eyes will be open that you can and see it. The thing about it is, we plan the wrong way. Now, I don't want to see no show of hands on this, but how many of you didn't want to get up this morning? Hmm? How many of you were rushing when you got up? Because yeah, we're running late. You know what I call that? I call it the three P's. Whole pra planning. We should have, what, prepared last night. Hmm? And to do here. But if one of us gets sick, one way or the other, we want everybody to stop what they're doing and get on their knees and start praying. Well, I, I need you. I need you. Well, God needs you to go out and do something, too. He's given us a, a, a calling to go out. So make plans of what you want to do. Even if it's unexpected things that happen. When Jesus fed, fed the 5,000, he told them, he didn't feed them. He said, who fed them? It was his disciples. He told them to set them down in what? Fifties and what? Hundreds. Mm -hmm. So when they brought the bread, he just blessed it and started passing it out. But the greatest thing of that, it was 12 baskets. When they all ate, that was 12 baskets left over. So that's more than enough. And you and I have that same privilege of having more than enough to give to people. That's why we want to come and do the thing that God has ordained us to do. We got to learn how to stop, look, and listen. How many times you, your child will call you, you hear him, but you're not listening to him. But you hear a certain cry, a certain tone of voice that when they speak out, boy, you jump up like I don't know what because you know that child is in trouble. Well, at that time, he may not be in trouble, but he, he sounds like he's in trouble, but he got your attention. God don't want to do that with us. He wants to come freely and, and work with him. Seek it. Like I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right, and these things will be added. What it is, the blessings that it be added. But we got to what? Seek him. It's just he said, that word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He ain't going to let you run into nothing. But, well, we got to trust him. We lost the R of things of God. We don't respect them like we used to when we was coming up. We don't, want, we, we don't honor his time. The world says 10%. God says one tenth. But we don't work it to build people. We work it to build what? Fill our pockets. But if we do it, we go after God's word, he said, one tenth. The same way, too, if we take 24 hours in a day, and you take one-tenth of it, it's what, two hours? So how many hours do you tarry with him a day? How many hours do we worship him? He, he, he already knows what we need and what we don't need, but he wants us to come what? To worship him, to praise him. Yeah, even if you're driving along down the street, the road, one way or the other, and nobody in the car but you, turn that rock and roll off and start to sing. Hmm? You'll be amazed at how things will happen. 
that you start to pray and start to preach and you start to speak in tongues, that when you're driving along one way or the other, that things, your whole atmosphere, environment will change. And that's what we have to do. So when we do things, get to listen to what's going on. Don't hear or listen to what is going on. As a child coming up, I don't know if some of you have probably seen that, man, coming up, I never forget that stop, look, and listen. Because they used to be on the Santa Fe Railroad track, the crossing that you go, and it just said, stop, look, and listen. And that, that's why I generated that from the listen to a stop and listen to what God is telling us to do. Not what we want to hear. Listen to what he had backed up by this. This is what we have to do. We know that he can. He gave us uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Have any of you ever heard of a guy by the name of called Larry Lee? Dr. Larry Lee. He's from Texas, Fort, Fort Worth there. He wrote, a, he wrote an element. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you. He wrote an element of seven elements to Matthew 9, 3, uh, 3, 9 6, uh, 6, 9 to 13. Six elements there. I'll give them to you Tuesday night. I can get you out here for prayer one way or the other. <laughs> but uh, he, he started this prayer and started to praise and how you can praise God for one hour. Talking to him, you cover everything. You get the, you 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 give, you're worshiping God. You're thanking Him for His daily bread. You you ask Him for give, forgiveness of sin, a sin in your life. Give us this day our debtors that we give. Then we turn around and we worship Him. Give Him thanks for whatever it is He's done. And that's the thing of it is. As I said earlier, God knows everything about us. But when you come in raising your hand up, singing high praises and things like that, that changes the whole atmosphere. The stress come off you, you know, the one way that is going on. If you get <coughs> Matthew, uh, not Matthew, Romans 8, 17, we talk about it a lot too. He said, children of God, heirs of God, heirs of God, join heirs with you. God put us on the level when he's, we accept him on the same level, his, his son Jesus. And we go around and look down on it. We don't look, uh, give it the, the, the praise that it should because we take it for granted. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, don't, he doesn't change. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us, where have he sent his word? It would accomplish and return back what it said. Who is he sending the word by? You and I. When we evangelize with people, talk to them about Jesus, we're telling them about Jesus. Jesus. God's not telling them that. God could have spoke to Ezekiel when he told him, said, speak, uh, he told him, said, speak to the dry bone. God could have spoke to those bones, but he wanted man to do it from the earth. He didn't want to be down here telling you what to do. He wanted you to speak. And that's why I confirm the things that I said earlier about uh, Pastor Joel o John Osteen. Your miracle is in your mouth. When we speak God's words back to him, that's what's going to cause the overflow. God already knows. When you come in crying, God, uh, he already said, I got it right over here, but you got to go through this. It just don't come in and holler one way or the other. To tell something happened to my mother. My, I went back home one time, and my, when I was with my brothers and friends, I would know when we got back about 10.30. So when I walked in the door, she said, Charles, if you want something to eat? No, Mama, I don't want nothing to eat. And then my sister come out and said, Mama, I want it. Get in there and fix it yourself. <laughs> no? see, these, these, see, little things like that. See, you see the difference just in the tone of my... She, she was willing to get up and go fix it for me, but she didn't want to go fix it for my sister. See, you, that's what we have, we have found ourselves in, and that's not the God that we serve. That's not the God we serve. We, we serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, forever, and he does not change. 
is you and I will make the change. It's you and I will go out to get people to fill these seats up. Hmm? It's you and I that's going to help in the t- king, in, in the, I call them, I almost said king, uh, kingdom kids. When we go out, when they go out here, it's you and I. Do you notice? As I, I think I said this earlier, the government, God didn't fix the government to, de- to what? Train your children. They trained our children. He created you to change. He made you the same. You are the teacher. If you don't, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, it tells you. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 to 9, tell you. And, 11, and Deuteronomy 8, 11, 18, tell you. It's taught in the home. It's taught in the, you teach them at home. Mm-hmm. And so it's mentioned here, when they're 11 years and under, they're still being taught in that. But when they're 12 and up, they're treated like adults. A young man, he's with the father. He stays with his father. A young lady stays with the mother to learn to lie about things, house life and everything else. But the point of it is, what do we give our children to read? How many verses? You know, uh, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about this come back on us. They don't know. If they don't know the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, who that is, that's our fault because we have it here. But I tell you what, let, what is his name? A spider man come and come up with something. He'll pick it up and say it right away or she'll pick it up right, and know about spider man, but they don't know about God. Who is that falling on? And what I'm, what I'm saying is that I don't want you to go around and do it and get mad at me. You can get mad one way, but I don't care. But the point of it is, <coughs> The point of it is, my, grand, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, and my father taught me nothing about life. What I learned, I learned out on the street and got quacked up in every which way, one way, laughed at, made shame one way or the other. But the point, what we got to get is here, is if I'd have got it from my great-grandfather, I'd have got it from my <coughs> grandfather, and my father, I wouldn't be in the condition I am today because they'd have gave me the right way to go. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing of it is. Where we are now, where you have children, 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 is get involved in their life. Uh, I got one that I just born about a year ago. Uh, her name is Jadine or something. I can't change it. I changed it to Jadine. Because I, I'm on, she gonna know I had something said about him, huh? huh? But, huh? but the point of it is, I'm not gonna be, let it be like it was where nobody told me what's going on. The things that I went through, I could have been eliminated. But they didn't sit down and tell me about the facts of life. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah we want to give them everything they they desire. But the point of it is, is when, when, when they stand up into the two feet, is it backed up by God? And that's what we want. We want to give them, we ain't, we ain't giving them God. We want to recognize that, that we recognize and, and that God is in our life. You see that? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Huh? Do we do that? Are we teaching our as I said, are we teaching our children the Lord's prayer? My brother and I fought for a long time because I always beat him. I said, bless him. Was the fact that I would say Jesus wept. And that was my big verse, you know, to eat. Till one day my mother said, You don't say that no more, you go get a little one out of the Bible. Then I had to learn another one. If you see what I mean? But it was setting down one way or the other. But the point of it is, God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we got to get it within us to give it to somebody else. Yes, it's difficult because we draw the line now and we step across it. But the point of it is, if we don't stop right now, who's going to stop? Who's going who's to do it? And that's the thing with that. God... <coughs> 
in uh, Psalm, um, Psalm 81, 10, talks about what he would do. But just for us to be quiet and listen, and he'll fill our mouth to what to say. But you're not going to get it filled by keeping this closed. And the only time you look into it is when somebody is born in the, into the family or somebody dies. We write into it. I know it's a big Bible. I've seen it in many places at home, on the coffee table. That's the only time I ever used it. The other time you wouldn't see it open up no other place. But it's because of those things like that. Nobody was getting the word. Uh, I didn't get my first Bible until I, <coughs> I went to a church over in Hawaii. And a little co-family bought me and another guy by the name of Johnson a Bible. That was the first Bible. I was 20 some years old in a house with a house to me. I didn't have a Bible. But I got the Bible from Faith Nicole. And she gave me my first Bible. Why did it have to wait that long before I got my first Bible? Oh, yeah, I got the Sunday school books. I got the Sunday school card, but it wasn't the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. That, that don't keep them in walking in a straight line uh, because his word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's what we have to do. We continue to learn. Learn, we're, we're not here to... We're here to love people as God has loved us. He has loved us. Even though in our ups and downs and good and bad, he still loves you. He still loves you. And that's what we have to do to our children. Love them. Different things that comes about one way or the other. Give them honor. Help them one way or the other. I've seen many times that was children will come up and ask the parents, help me with my homework. Get out of here, boy. I don't know nothing about that. Get out of here one way. No, they need you. If you don't know, you join them together. Go down and see the instructor, the teacher, whoever it may be. I was teaching a class one uh, back in the early part of the 80s <coughs> uh, to children. And I gave pa paperwork to take home. Well, the next Sunday when we come in, we had, everybody had the pa paperwork for the, except for this little girl. And then the little boy didn't know what he had did with his. But she said, my dad balled it up and threw it in the trash. Hmm? So you see, but her heart was devastated because it got destroyed. She didn't have to show what other kids have, to show what God in her life. And that's the thing. So we have to be aware where we are, when we are, what we're doing, and how they're going to affect the people around us. Don't be so quick to speak. Because yet may be you on the other end of the next conversation. Now put yourself in the people's place that when we run, we can have a generosity about our life. We have honor. And most of all, that we talked about the song today, when we got faith. We have faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And that's the thing. Get faith into our family. Spend some time out of that 24 hours. Get some time one way. I know it's giving to school, you're going all this, doing all this good work and all this stuff one way. To, but find time to spend with God. Don't let every, everything that comes on that television, they want, they want. But let them want this. Yeah. I, and and I'm talking about this because, see, I work with Boy Scouts, something like Boy Scouts are called Royal Rangers, for about six years. And I've seen a lot of hurt and a lot of turn around. The one way or the other that ch neglected the child. The one that really hurt me was about we was going on a father and son fishing trip. And uh, San Diego State playing football. And his father, uh, one of the kids' father was from that foot, uh, uh, went to school there. And his buddies got ticket. We going the same weekend, we are going the fishing. They had the football game. And the boy was disaster because he'd been bragging on his father and bragging on his father and he come in and told us getting in. Because every day he come from school, he would take check that box, make sure everything was in it. And then when it came time, we went fishing. And the boys teased him because his father wasn't there. Hmm? 
Okay, what it is, one way or the other. So the next day, when he went, over, he went to school, he got kicked out of school because he was fighting. And then his father called me and told me, said, I'm not bringing to, uh, going to, to the Royal Ranger meeting. I said, why? He said, well, yeah. I said, he's fighting for you. You promised him you would take him to a game, uh, fishing. But that game was more important. So right now, he's being harassed, and uh, he's fighting for you, but you're going to punish him now. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying I know what I'm talking about. I know here one way or the other because I know through this. I know what it is to be a child, child neglected. I know what it is being the oldest child. You have to do things one way or the other. I know the hurt that that was. And some of that hurt I've still, I'm not going to talk about it. Some of that hurt I still carry today. But thank God I can breathe and get over it over and move to the next level. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that we have had. So when we talk about, um, I want to get out of here. When we talk about seeking God, oh, yeah. We talk about Ephesians chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. I'm going to just, just go over this land. We talk about the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. My point, what I'm getting at, uh, apostles, they go into countries that where Jesus has never been taught. And it's called the setup. The prophet stirs up things and stirs up people's heart and keep them to uh, to make correction in their life. The evangelist fills the place up telling them about the things of God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. A pastor, a shepherd, teach the sheep to grow up, to be strong. And the last but not least, where all of us come into the land, we become teachers. We are teachers, whether it's at home or in the house of God. You should teach. You should know enough of this word and this, and this Bible to be able to hold a, at least a 20-minute conversation with any person that's in you that you can go find out what it is. So when we set up, uh, set up, we stir up, we fill up, we grow up, and we train up. We never get through training. Okay, how old are you all? You always, uh, as I open the door, open to learn, to learn something. I even see it out here with these children. I hear plan. They got the advantage meal when they started working these little machines and all this stuff. But I can teach them. I know when my granddaughter was at, she used to come, oh, that's not the way you do it, Papa. You do it here. And then no one, don't, don't knock them for it. But get them into this. Get them into God's word. And as we get them into God's word, things are going to change, and we're going to go about seeing things that's different. The biggest thing that I teach is, is one way or the other, and the best, best way to be taught at home is to be taught by mom. I learned through how to make what you call that when you're in the hospital. You make that, that fold on a bed, your hospital fold on a bed. I learned that from a nurse. She's come down, and my mother after that made us always put that fold in, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the bed. But it was something you learned. And I tell you, it paid off when I got in the military because I didn't have to learn. I already had been doing it. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is just continue to find ways to serve. Serve God, whether it's a day or night. You know, serve him one way or the other. Respect each other. This is not a joke matter. We, 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 we got to look at the seriousness of of, of, of this epidemic that's going around here. It was the first time in the universe that a sickness went around the world. And what are we sitting around here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we better start getting talking to who? Talking to God, our creator, to what it's going to do. Pray for our pastor. I know he's a strong, strong willed individual, but you still, still pray for him. Pray for each other and, and, and here and there. Gonna make some, <coughs> some changes gonna be made. 
But the change that they made is not for the advantage of the individual, it's for the body of Christ. Just like you know, young man, I tease him all the time back there, he got that GAP on him. You know what I tell him? Hmm? God will always provide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God will always provide. So when I see that, I look at him. Yeah, he, well, he may not know the meaning of it yet, but God will provide. And that's what the thing that what we have. He already know what you and I need. Man. In clothing, come to serve, not to be served. Plan things. If we're going to plan things, plan from Z to A. It's backwards. And you implement from A to Z. You take right now and say, you're going to go out to dinner. You start right there. Here, when you leave here, you're going to go to dinner. You start the planning. You're going to go to the street, go to that street, go ahead. You're going to go here. Then when it comes time to implement, you turn around and you say, we go from A to Z. You already been there from Z to A because you did it backwards. And this is the same thing here. But what we have to do, our planning. Plan what it is that's happening. Plan starting right now for next Sunday. For this, this coming Tuesday night, when, uh, Thursday night. The youth, when they meet on Friday night. Stop by. I know I said the last time. I, I haven't been out here yet, but I'm going to get out here. See, uh, like I said, come in and act like a teenager. But I'm going to come. Don't you go? And that's what we say. Get involved. Get involved with the things of God that you can love, show your love, give your love to one another. Love is not money all the time. Love, love, love is evil things with money. Man. But when you're giving somebody love, it goes a long way. And that's the thing that where we are uh, to go. So in all that is said and done, one way or the other, we come to seek those things of God but we go to the word. Go find it. You're not, you may not understand it. But I tell you what, you keep reading it and reading it. Then God will probably let somebody cross your path and say something about it. And they'll give you a whole different perspective of what you've been studying. That's what it is. Man. Coming together. I got some things that I'm talking over with pastor right now. To one way or the other. When we, as of right now, do you know the percentage of you that are not taking notes? What's the percentage of you will lose it before you get home? Hmm? You will lose what we ha- you will lose at least one fifth of it before you get out of the door. By Wednesday, you will lose three quarters of it. When Sunday come around, you forgot the whole thing. We got to, just as we read the word, we got to receive the word. I take note. Still do. I still take note. And the point, but the point of it is, we not take the note. This I'm listening to what he uh, individual is talking about, but also God gives me something to give, and I, and I write it down fast. So when I go back and I make my outline out of what I studied, this comes in hand. God gave me this, that he will <clears throat> be with us always. Then I know what, what, when it comes time to teach, I can teach you that God will be with us always. He will walk with us. But it's like it says in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things be added. The things they add is your pleasure. But we got to seek God, seek, seek his wisdom, seek his knowledge in prayer. But when we come, Tuesday night, come to see something different. Come to receive something different that you can take back and put in your life. I'm not telling you you got to do it word for word, what I'm saying. You listen to the Holy Spirit, and he'll guide you in the ways to go with it. 
You may not comprehend here, but you'll be driving along and on. The Holy Spirit will give you something about this Bible that you will go back and you say, oh, now I see it. And that's what we have to do. Learn. Make yourself hungry for do the things of God. Yes, it takes us an inconvenience. We got to pick the children up from school. We got to go do this. We got to go shopping one way to. But God, if you want me to do this, I got to have a way. I got to have some assistance. And that's the thing for it is tonight. Please stand.